Now today we're looking at an electrical current sensor. This works with the air pump system. So let's jump right over to the vehicle and I'll show you where this lives. Now the electrical current sensor lives on the driver's side behind the fender and that's precisely what we're looking at there. In order to get access to this, I simply removed the front wheel and the plastic inner fender well. Now if you need a guide on how to remove this plastic fender well, I will include a link on the top right hand of the screen and in that video I show precisely how to remove the plastic tab and then the whole thing is simply removed from the vehicle. Now this sensor works with the air pump system or the secondary air injection system sometimes it's called. I'll have a detailed video on this pump within a few days so if you want to check that out just stay tuned but in the meantime to simply test this it's one of the easiest things to test really and to test the sensor, I'm using a digital multimeter. It's an expensive $23 off Amazon. And as always, I'll include a link in the description box below. In other words, we want to verify that power is getting to the electrical current sensor. So take a look right here. I need to first unplug this, this uh, two-wire connector. And this is actually attached to a metal tab. In other words, look how nice and tight this is. So right back here at the 3 o'clock position, I'm just pushing back this tab and then slowly bring this out. And then at the 12 o'clock position, there's a tab. Just press on the tab. Don't pull from the wires. Pull from the body. And looking closely, we can see that there's a plastic tab right here. And there's another one on the opposite end. Now to hold in the other one, it's a little difficult here. I just have a flathead screwdriver, essentially a very, very small flathead, and just insert it, insert it into the plastic body very, very gently. Now it's a little tricky to deal with, and I just had to move the camera out of the way because it's blocking my movement, but once you get these tabs up, okay, now we can remove the top cover. And if we look closely enough, we can see, a little hard actually for the camera to pick it up, but right there, there's another bracket holding on the plastic body. And I will give you a better shot in a moment, but right smack in the middle against the body, the frame of the vehicle, there's a tab, just push that tab back, and then you can wiggle this off. And right here is that tab, just press it out and wiggle off from its mount. Flathead screwdriver, place it up inside the body and press out and then the bottom comes right off and then right here we have a tab pressing the tab pull in the body and there you go so now we need to test if power is getting to this harness connector so on the multimeter we need the volts DC setting. Simply plug in the probes that come with the multimeter. Now the other thing I'll be using is a probe kit. Now this is not necessary. You can use a paper clip but because I have these in my garage it just makes the job a lot easier. And then I'm inserting the first probe into the harness connector. This will not hurt it. If you are using paper clips, make sure it's incredibly thin, okay? The other probe I'm going to leave out for now. Let's first turn on the ignition key. So now I'm taking that lead, this red lead, and making a connection to the multimeter. So once again, the red wire goes directly to that first probe and then the second black wire I'm first going to hook up to my probe okay and now we want to see if we have a 5 volt reading and then I'm taking the black probe and let me zoom in here and as you can see we have three terminals I'm just inserting this probe into the second terminal and then let's see if we have a reading and as you can see we have nothing going on here so let's try the third terminal now we're just removing the second and inserting into the third and now we have a 5 volt reading now 
It's also a minus five volt reading, which tells me I just have the wires reversed. So let me just quickly take care of that. There we go. And as you can see, we have a five volt reading. That minus does not hurt anything, does not hurt the car, just means you have the wires reversed. So if you have a five volt reading and you have trouble code 1415 or 1416, you can go ahead and replace this and you're good to go. But what if you do not see a reading here? What do you do? The first thing you want to check is the wiring going to the harness connector. In other words, maybe one is pulled out. Maybe if you take a look at the metal prongs here, you see how they're perfectly parallel with one another? And sometimes what happens is if someone has tugged on the back wire here, those metal prong, one metal prong may be pushed back. So check the wiring here. Now, if everything looks okay at this location, then you have to do a little bit of work. So really at this point, you have two options. The first option is purchasing a tool that can help you find the brake, something like Power Probe, for example. Excellent, excellent tool, but it's a little pricey. The flip side is go to your local mechanic, ask them how much do you want just to find the brake. Chances are, if, it, if it's a really good mechanic, they'll have these tools. Maybe they'll charge you a hundred bucks, find the brake, and you're up and running. Now, if you have checked everything, there's no wiring issues, the last resort is there may be a problem with the vehicle's computer or the ECM. That's sort of remote unless the car was maybe flooded or maybe there was a fire. Chances are if you have this trouble code, it's simply just the sensor itself and you'll need to replace it.